Okay, now I have a question which is a little different, and I think you'll like answering it. Um, so far, Dimension 20 has been a very inclusive show, giving representation to many people from all walks of life. I'm sure this season won't be any different. However, I'm curious about the process. Medieval times weren't as inclusive as the 21st century, and I'm wondering if the team has given some thought on how to tackle this issue. I do love this question, Oren. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so, so uh, uh, in every season of the, you know, uh, of the past many of Dimension 20 seasons that we've done, we always hire sensitivity consultants to consult on the show in matters of uh, race and ethnicity, in matters of sexual orientation, in matters of disability, all the kind of things that we can do to um, uh, make the show as inclusive as possible. And we always include uh, consultation from these sensitivity consultants as early in the process as possible. Because the show is improvised at the table, um, we, I, we can't do what like a screenwriter or novelist would do, which would be to submit a manuscript to a sensitivity re a reader or sensitivity consultant and then get notes back. So we need to be as prepared as possible when we go in to improvise with what we're planning on doing. So the trick with uh, uh, A Crown of Candy was we have nations, we're going into this medieval period that was extremely barbaric. Um, uh, and you know, how do we make it inclusive? There are themes that we want to include that have to do with, you know, betrayal, politics, and war. And in those situations, you know, people do use uh, uh, differences of nations and xenophobia to whip up public feeling and animosity between nations. So that's a part of politics, right? Um, what I will say is there were a lot of interesting conversations in making sure that this show. Uh, cleaved to Dimension 20's uh, desire and love for representation and inclusivity, while also depicting a season that's gonna have a lot of bad guys in it, right? Um, one of the things that we decided really quickly was, um, you know, we always want a show that is really inclusive of race. And this was a very interesting season because we're in a world where everybody is like gumdrops and broccoli, you know? So it's this world where ideas of race are uh, bizarre because people there's there's a character who's uh, uh, the you know the king's uh, right hand man who's just a slice of cake. So what <laughs> what race is that? Um, you know, and uh, uh, we have an awesome uh, artist Samir Barrett who you know after having a lot of talks with sensitivity consultants, um, you know we had these initial conversations with the consultants that had to do with. Um, this period of time is kind of based historically on the same thing that Game of Thrones is based on, which is the War of the Roses, these like high medieval conflicts between like England and France and these kind of European nations. Um, do we want to be inclusive of non-European countries at the risk of engaging in stereotype about other nations, like if you include a East Asian nation, um, uh, you know, you get into issues of like, well, what food are those characters made out of? And uh, that can be something that can be um, uh, very triggering for, for people and make them feel less included in the show. Um, and, you know, what do we do with like, uh, and then if you have these nations that kind of have like national character to them, what is the character you give if you're trying to base a nation on a non-European nation, right? And uh, there were a lot, we had a lot of consultations about it. And basically what a lot of our sensitivity consultants came to was um, because you're basing this on a historical period and basing it on this like dark ages or, or high medieval Catholic church dominated Europe, um, there were people of color in Europe at that time. Right. And that often gets fully erased. There's a lot of great, if you go online, you can find like medieval POC is an awesome Tumblr about the presence of non white people in medieval Europe that have been totally erased from history. So the decision we ended up making, and we went and talked to Samir Barrett, was um, it is uh, going to be okay for us to. Uh, keep the architecture, the clothing design, keep those things in this like 
high medieval kind of Candyland esque, you know, high medieval Bavarian Gothic European place, but we're not going to default our character art to being Eurocentric. So, so our if our people are made of candy and meat and vegetables and fruit. Um, we don't need to default to white features for those characters. We don't need to default that, uh, you know, when the characters are humanoid enough looking and they're not like just an apple with legs and arms or whatever, um, you know, uh, let's not default to your Euro European features for anybody, even though our architecture and military stylings are going to be kind of Eurocentric. Um, so that was like a thing that took a, a, was a bunch of awesome conversations about how to make the show as inclusive as possible. Um, and then uh, there are some decisions we made about uh, inclusivity where we just looked at like LGBT representation and we just we just kind of went like, um, you know what, we're going to make this world just more inclusive of that. So, um, you know, there are. Uh, uh, same-sex relationships just in the world. Um, uh, you know, different nations have different levels of feeling about uh, uh, those issues. But for the most part, you know, we just said, like, uh, uh, we want to represent, uh, you know, people on the LGBT spectrum, um, you know, in a more uh, inclusive way than maybe the Middle Ages were at the time. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, the, and then uh, past that in terms of other types of representation, um, uh, it's very interesting because there are a lot of villainous forces in this season. So there's definitely some bad eggs out there, but I think our, the main thing is that our heroes are extremely inclusive. Um, uh, so our PCs and Candia in general um, uh, are, immune to a lot of like forces of bigotry and so hopefully anyone watching the show will um find themselves included at least in in the arms of the heroes of the show awesome um i remember in the trailer i saw a character i'm so curious about that character and uh, i i gotta ask there was a character in the trailer who was a bag of chips <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and i'm like Wait, um, can you explain <laughs> that for a second? <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. So, so to answer your question, um, uh, uh, the 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 uh, certain food people in Calorum are born with a part of their body also being a container for the food that they are. So. The bag is also a part of that character's body. Oh, um, God. There is, uh, there is another character who is a, a living bottle of milk, and the glass bottle is a part of her body as well. She is a... Uh, wow. You know, she, uh, yes, absolutely. 